I have something to tell you that's vitally important to all New Zealanders and to the future of our country. It's about war, the price of war, the cost of war. We are thousands of miles away from the scenes of conflict and do not personally experience war. But the experience in Europe and other parts of the world where the actual conflict is on is not brought fully home to us. A bombing raid in Britain with the announcement there were some casualties cannot convey to us the tragedy and the sorrow, the sadness and the pain of those in the towns where the raid took place. We hear of mass murder and brutality by the Nazis and the fascists. The death rate, for instance, in France since the Germans entered into occupation is up by 49%. In Holland, by 47%. The people in all the countries occupied by Germany are starving for food. Hundreds of thousands of children have died in Greece through shortage of food. These are the sufferings that are part of the price of war. Compare these statements with another side of war, the actual physical requirements of war. We're all aware of these shortages. The reason is plain enough. One pound of sugar is used in every 47 smokeless cartridges, and we make them by the 100 million. One parachute uses up enough silk for 100 pairs of silk stockings. To keep a big bomber flying one hour needs enough petrol to run the family car for six months. Tanks, aeroplanes, ships, guns, all use up material that in peacetime are used to produce the things that you and I normally consume. The labor power of our men and women, previously used in producing goods for our comfort and enjoyment, is now used to make machines and other things necessary for war. The machine operator is making guns. The men and women who make these guns receive high wages. They deserve them. But there's a positive scarcity of commodities and services in which that money is usually spent. This, in some cases, affects prices. High wages, material scarcities, shortage of labor force up prices of necessary goods. New methods are necessary to meet change conditions. We believe and we are confident that we can introduce these new methods and solve the economic problem of war. We desire to maintain the value of our money and prices of essential goods at December the 15th, 1942, level. There's no better way of using our surplus money than helping to pay for the guns and the aeroplanes and the ships and the food and the clothing and the other equipment used by our soldiers and sailors and airmen. This payment can be made in the normal way by the government increasing taxation. This year, however, it has been decided not to increase taxation, but to raise a greater sum by way of loans than in any previous year of the history of the Dominion. The budget this year provides for an expenditure on war of 148 million pounds, 10 million pounds for the Navy, 34 million pounds for the Air Force, and 68 million pounds for the Army, and the further 20 million pounds by way of reciprocal aid to the United States forces in the form of food and buildings for their use in the South Pacific. Taxation and other normal receipts will find more than 80 million pounds towards these costs. We have to find the rest by way of loans. There is no way of doing this unless everybody puts in all their surplus cash. I would suggest that we confine our spending to those goods that we really need. When we have paid the rent and settled with the grocer and kept our normal requirements to essentials, that we put the rest into the loans. It's a business proposition. No surer or safer investment has ever been offered to our people. Interest rates, low, but reasonable. We ought not to ask much whilst our soldiers are away fighting. Someday, we hope soon, the good things of life will be restored to us. We save now so that when good times come again, we'll be able to enjoy them.